Eva Anna Paula Hitler, born Eva Anna Paula Braun, was born February the 6, 1912. She was Adolf Hitler's long-term companion and, for less than 40 hours, his wife. Beautiful, lovely, submissive, and prone to self-destruction, these were Eva Braun's qualities that captured Adolf Hitler's attention. He had a passionate, forbidden, 14-year romance with her. The Fuhrer never officially recognized her as his wife and never presented her in public. Only his closest friends knew of their relationship. When they were together and official visitors arrived, Eva was kept locked in a room until they left, wrote Valet Heinz Linga in his memoirs. The reason was simple. Hitler claimed he could not bond with any woman because thousands of German women who choose me would be disappointed. In 1935, Eva Braun wrote in her diary, The weather is beautiful, and I, the mistress of Germany and of the world's greatest man, must stay at home and look out the window. Eva was at the time a 23-year-old photo assistant with a secret. She was Adolf Hitler's lover. Over the next decade, Braun and Hitler had a turmoil-ridden relationship that ended in their mutual suicide. Hitler likely viewed Eva Braun as a reflection of himself. There are two ways to judge a man's character. He reportedly told his friend Ernst Hamstengel by the woman he marries and by the way he dies. The dictator married Braun and died beside her. But who was Eva Braun? Who was this woman who loved Hitler? Adolf Hitler walked into Heinrich Hoffmann's photography studio, his personal photographer, in 1929. Eva Braun, Hoffmann's assistant photographer, ran out to buy beer and Bavarian meatloaf for her guest. When she returned, 17-year-old Braun said her first words to Hitler, Guten Appetit, and then she blushed. 16 years later, the two would duck into a Berlin bunker where they would marry, and then commit suicide the next day. However, in 1929, Braun was simply a young blonde girl who attracted the attention of the 40-year-old future Fuhrer. Braun hailed from a traditional Catholic family. She, along with her two sisters, grew up in Munich. Eva had light blonde hair, short hair, blue eyes. Although she had been raised in a Catholic convent, she had learned feminine astuteness, recalled Henriette, Hoffman's daughter. Even Hoffman's husband, Balder von Schirach, once called Eva Munich's most beautiful girl. At the time Eva met Hitler, she was not familiar with the older man with a funny mustache. Heinrich Hoffmann called her Hitler Hevwolf, so Braun certainly didn't recognize that name from any place. Hoffmann later went on to describe the scene. She was just an eye-catching little thing, in whom, notwithstanding her inconsequential and silly outlook, or perhaps just because of that, he found the kind of relaxation and peace of mind he was looking for. Hoffman predicted at the time that Braun would never be more than a fling. Never, either in his voice, look, or gesture, did Hitler conduct himself in any way that suggested a deeper interest in her. Eva Braun was not Hitler's only lover. When he came to power, Adolf Hitler surrounded himself with women. Thousands of women humbled themselves at Hitler's feet explained British author David Prince Jones. They would try to kiss his boots, and some succeeded, even to the point of gulping down the gravel he stepped on. The Fuhrer had some pretty strong feelings about romantic entanglements himself. A highly intelligent man must always choose a primitive and stupid woman, Hitler once claimed. For many years, Eva was just one of the many women Hitler dated. But Eva wanted more. According to Alan Bullock, Eva would ultimately become the mastermind in their relationship. The initiative was all on Eva's side. She told her friends that Hitler was in love with her and that she would make him marry her. In 1935, Eva was distraught at the news that Hitler had picked the new mistress. He now has a replacement for me, she wrote in her diary. Her name is Valkor, and she looks like it, including her legs. But those are the shapes that attract him. Eva knew she could not count on monogamy from Hitler. I would never stand in his way, she wrote, if he fell in love with someone else. 
Why should he care what happens to me? Nevertheless, Eva felt ignored by Hitler during their relationship. After her 23rd birthday, she regretted that she hadn't brought her a present. So, now I bought some jewelry, Braun wrote. A necklace, earrings, and a matching ring for 50 marks. I hope he likes it. If not, he can buy me something himself. Hitler was extremely private about his romantic relationships. He reportedly obliterated all the letters from Eva Braun and all his other mistresses. He also refused to marry until the day before his death. Hitler instead fostered the myth that he was married to his work, devoting his life to Germany. A family would be a distraction, Hitler concluded. To acknowledge a mistress would destroy Hitler's image, since the existence of a mistress did not suit the successfully cultivated myth of the solidarity and godly Fuhrer who sacrificed his personal life for the sake of the German people. The downside of marriage is that it creates rights, Hitler once said. It is much better to have a mistress. The burden is eased and all is brought to the level of a gift. Consequently, throughout the 1930s, Hitler kept Eva on the sidelines. During a visit to Eva in February 1935, Hitler seemingly suggested that he would buy a house for his mistress. I dare not think of it, Braun penned in her diary. It would be wonderful. Dear God, please bring this to fruition within a reasonable period of time. Just a few weeks later, Eva was disheartened. I wish I had never met him, she wrote. I am desperate. Now I am going to buy more sleeping pills, so at least I will be half woozy and won't think about him so much. When he says he loves me, he is taking it as seriously as his promises that he never keeps, Braun lamented. Why does he torment me so much instead of just putting an end to it all? In light of her situation, Eva Braun attempted to end her life several times. On May the 28th, 1935, she hoped that Hitler would reply to her most recent letter. If I don't get a reply by 10 tonight, I will take my 25 pills and lie down in peace, she wrote. Dear God, kindly make it possible for me to speak to him today. Tomorrow it will be too late. I have decided to take 35 pills to ensure death this time, she wrote. That was not the first time she had attempted suicide. In 1932, she did try to end her life with her father's pistol. But the attempt in 1935 was different. Hitler was standing in the middle of a political struggle that would cost him his chancellorship. Just a few years earlier, Hitler's half-niece and lover, Geli Rabel, was reported to have killed herself in her apartment. Yet another scandal could have ended Hitler's career. Hitler's secretary, Christa Schroeder, saw Eva's suicide attempt as a ruse. She shrewdly pursued him with suicide attempts. And she succeeded, of course, because, being a politician, Hitler couldn't have survived a second suicide of someone close to him. After attempting to take his life, Eva and Hitler became closer. She moved into the guest room in one of Hitler's properties. During the war, she started living in the Birkhoff Chalet in the Bavarian Alps. While she was Hitler's mistress for more than a decade, she never joined the Nazi party. But she backed Hitler's policies and became one of the most important figures in the dictator's inner circle. In the late 1930s and 1940s, she started monitoring access to Hitler. Nazi leaders such as Albert Speer and Joseph Goebbels would seek out Eva Braun to bolster their connection to him. Throughout the Second World War, Braun lived in the Berghof Chalet. She spent her time swimming and skiing. As Hitler was waging war, Braun spent her time reading cheapskate novels and endlessly primping herself, sometimes changing her clothes seven times a day. However, Eva Braun had also become a central figure in Nazi propaganda efforts. In the privacy of the Berghof mountain retreat, Braun fulfilled the role of Hitler's wife without a marriage. Her relationship with Hitler remained a secret to the outside world. Eva's photographs were stamped with publication forbidden to ensure that their relationship would remain private. Yet behind the scenes, Eva became the Third Reich's public affairs expert. She filmed Hitler in Berghof, depicting the Fuhrer as a caring leader who loved children. She snapped photos of the dictator and sold them to Heinrich Hoffmann, becoming a wealthy woman during those years. Eva draped herself in diamond jewelry and sat next to Hitler during meals. 
But still, Hitler refused to marry her. Speer described her as an unhappy woman who was profoundly attached to Hitler. Following the wedding day, Eva and Hitler committed suicide. On April the 29th, 1945, just as the Soviets invaded Berlin, Adolf Hitler and Eva Braun were at last married. Their marriage took place in an underground bunker with a handful of Nazi supporters. The bride and groom toasted with champagne after the ceremony. Then, Hitler left the wedding breakfast to write his last will and testament. Hitler's war was coming to an end, and he had lost. To escape the disgrace of being captured, Hitler decided to kill himself. Eva Braun agreed to die with him. Hitler decided to take his own life. Braun, always self-conscious about her image, picked poison. Before he offered a cyanide pill to his fiancée, Hitler gave one to his dog, Blondie, to make sure it would work. Give my love to Bavaria, Braun told Trottel Junga, Hitler's secretary. On April the 30th, 1945, the bride and groom had a dinner of spaghetti with tomato sauce. But Braun barely ate. She changed into the Fuhrer's favorite dress, the black one with the roses in the neckline. Then, the couple shut themselves in a private room. A shot sounded. Hitler's bodyguard, Rokas Misch, opened the door to find Hitler dead. And I saw Eva with her knees bent, lying next to him on the sofa, he recalled. As far as Eva Braun was concerned, Hitler was Germany's savior, but she apparently did not care about his methods. Ensconced in Berghof, Braun performed the role of First Lady of the Third Reich, not thinking twice about Hitler's genocidal streak. Was Braun a villain or a victim? One can easily see her as both. Nevertheless, her complicit agreement with the Nazi regime and her lifelong devotion to Hitler pushed Braun steadily into the villain category. As Albert Speer famously celebrated, Eva's love for Hitler, her loyalty, was absolute, as she unmistakably proved in the end.